friends welcome to my blog ecg basics today we will discuss about the bundle branch blocks before discussing the bundle branch blocks let us uh, discuss about the normal conduction system of the heart as we know that a pulse travels from the sa node to the av node then there is a slight delay in the av node then after this bundle the impulse travels to the left bundle branch and the right bundle branch from the left bundle branch the impulses travel to the left anterior fascicle left posterior fascicle left septal fascicles and then to the pericardial system and this is the pericardial system has a very fast conducting system conduction of the impulse and they uh, depolarize the left ventricle and similarly the impulses from the right bundle branch they travel to the pericardial system they activate the right ventricle this conduction is so rapid that we get a fast urs complex these are very sh sharp and of short duration a normal qrs complex in an ecg is usually less than 120 milliseconds or we can say less than 3 small sphere so this is the normal conduction system of the heart uh, coming to the bundle branch blocks as we know that uh, the ventricular activity is represented by the qrs complexes so to look at look for the uh, bundle branch blocks we should always look at the qrs complexes their morphology and other secondary changes okay whenever we get uh, qrs complex in any uh, this uh, for bundle branch loss, the QRS complexes will be wide. Usually, they are wide. They are more than 120 millisecond. Reason for this, I will discuss in uh, next slide. And uh, uh, they are wider, more than 120 milliseconds, or they are more than one uh, three small spheres. They are. Uh, we have uh, QRS complexes uh, with less than 120 millisecond width also uh, we call them as incomplete bundle branch blocks and if their width is more than 120 millisecond we call that we call them as a complete bundle branch block after we uh, get the qrs complexes we have to look at their morphology whether it is a right bundle branch block left bundle branch block or in interventricular conduction defect we have to look at secondary changes and other coexisting and the loss also as we know that uh, ventricular depolarization represent the qrs complexes and it is very rapid because of rapid conduction in the ventricle that is because of pericardial systems uh, here we see uh, this is the left ventricle this is right ventricle and this is a septum as we see the impulse is traveling to the septum it goes to left ventricle and goes to right ventricle uh, whenever there is a block in the right ventricle the impulse will come it will go and activate the left ventricle but the right ventricle will not be activated because of the block in the uh, right bundle branch but the right ventricle also gets activated when the impulse comes from the uh, muscular tissue or we can say myocytes to the right ventricle so the right vent ventricle gets activated when the impulse comes and through the myocytes to the right ventricle and activates it but since this conduction is slow we get qrs complexes but they are wide we get wide qrs complexes similarly in case of left bundle branch if this left bundle branch is blocked the impulse will come it will not activate the left ventricle it but it will activate the right ventricle the right ventricle will will get activated the impulse will travel from the right ventricles to the left ventricle by the myocytes and it will activate the left ventricle but since the conduction of the uh, is slow in the through the when it uh, through the myocytes 
so we will get the wide qrs complexes so whenever we get wide qrs complexes in an ecg we should think of the bundle branch blocks they are wide qrs complexes means they are more than 120 millisecond wide or they are more than 3 small square wide only wide qrs complexes doesn't mean that the patient is having bundle branch blocks we have to see the other features also okay whenever the we get wide qrs complexes with other features suggestive of bundle branch block we call it as a complete bundle branch block but when the qrs complexes are of lesser duration less than 120 milliseconds we call them as incomplete bundle branch block so the bundle branch blocks are of two types complete and incomplete complete is means qrs complexes more than 120 milliseconds and incomplete means qrs complexes less than 120 millisecond but wider qrs complexes are also seen in electrolyte disturbances and some overdose of some drugs like tricyclic anti depressants so we have to take proper history and we have to further evaluate for electrolytes also whether the patient is having some electrolyte abnormalities whether the patient is a psychiatric patient has he been taking tricyclic antidepressants before uh, uh, labeling the patient as the bundle branch blocks so the first finding in the qrs complexes will be wide qrs complexes if we label a patient with uh, bundle branch block as a complete bundle branch block the next step will be to look at the morphology of the qrs complexes and determine where there is a block whether it is it is in the right bundle branch whether it is in the left bundle branch coming to the right bundle branch let us see what are the finding in the ecg whenever we have to see the bundle branch blocks we have to look at the two leads b1 and b6 most of the patient most of the clinician they use b1 and b6 as a tool for diagnosis of bundle branch blocks we can also use the lead one also so these are the three leads which help us in diagnosing the bundle branch blocks whether they are right bundle branch blocks or the left bundle branch blocks so let's see what happens in the right bundle branch suppose this is the left ventricle this is the right ventricle here the impulse is coming and suppose this is the block in the right bundle branch suppose this uh, right bundle branch is blocked the impulse will have normal course it will uh, as we have seen in previous slides that the first the septum is activated and then actually is like this then then uh, left ventricle is uh, depolarized so the in if we see lead b1 and v6 we have to see the changes in v1 and v6 only uh, because of sectal activation uh, we will get a very small negative deflection sorry as we know uh, because of uh, uh, sectal activation the first Uh, is there is first there is formation of the QA and usually we get the negative deflection in the V6 or V5 here V6 and here in the V1 we will get a very small positive deflection that is the R wave. Similarly, when uh, this vector uh, goes like this, it will activate uh, the ventricle left ventricle. Uh, we will get we will get very strong positive deflection in lead v6 and 
it's similarly uh, the corresponding negative deflection in the lead v1 okay since the right ventricle is not activated the impulse will travel from the uh, left ventricle to the right ventricle to the myocytes and uh, since uh, this uh, velocity of or we can say speed of this conduction to the ventricular myocytes is low we again get a small positive deflection in v1 and we will get another negative deflection in v6 so here we can see uh, we are getting two positive deflection in v1 let us see here here we can see uh, in right ventral branch block the septal activation is there we get negative q wave in v1 and small positive deflection in the sorry negative uh, deflection in the v6 and small positive deflection in the v1 similarly after activation of the septum the uh, activate there is activation of the left ventricle this is the direction of the vector we get a strong positive deflection in v6 and a negative deflection in the v1 corresponding negative deflection in the v1 so after activation of the left ventricle the impulse goes like this in the to the myocytes and it activates the right ventricle but since the velocity of the conduction is slow to the myocytes we get another positive deflection because of the activation of the right ventricle and its corresponding negative deflection in v6 this positive deflection in v1 so if we see here we get two positive deflection this is r wave this is s wave and another r wave so we get r s r pattern type type of this pattern in v1 so in right ventral branch block in v1 we will get r s r pattern and in v6 we get slurred s wave slurred s wave means the width of the s wave should be greater than r wave or we can say uh, it is greater than one small square in v6 and also in v1 so for right bundle branch block we get uh, changes in v1 v6 and at times lead one in v1 we get r s r pattern r s r dash pattern and in v6 we have slurred s wave v6 or we can say lead one this r s r pattern if we see it gives us the uh, feeling of a, the ears of the monkey sorry ears of the deer if we see the rsr pattern in lead v1 it uh, gives the resemblance of the ear of the rabbit so we also when we find rabbit ear appearance uh, in in cg in b1 leads then uh, we can suspect of uh, right bundle branch block so for diagnosing a right bundle branch block we need to get rs r pattern in v1 wide slurred s wave in lead v1 or v6 uh, if these findings we get in ecg then these findings are suggestive of right bundle branch block the bundle branch block as i have already told we categorize it into two complete and incomplete when the duration of the qrs complexes is less than 120 milliseconds we call it as incomplete and when the duration is more than 120 we call it as complete so one criteria for diagnosing the 
bundle branch block is the uh, duration of the QRS complexes. Second is the morphology of the QRS complexes. In uh, right bundle branch block, we saw that we get RSR dash pattern in V1 and slurred S waves, deep slurred S wave in lead 1 and V6. Okay, what is the significance of the right bundle branch block? The right bundle branch block can be seen in normal subjects, normal patients. Uh, we can find the right bundle branch block in the patients of atrial septal defect or ventricular septal defects in patients of cardiomyopathy. If the initial ECG of the patient is normal and he comes with the vague complaints of chest discomfort and ECG is suggestive of new RBV and if we compare it with, with the previous ECG and uh, if there is new onset of RBV then it also it is also suggestive of ischemia. As we know that atrial septal defect is of uh, two types ostium primum, ostium secundum and at times coronary sinus ASD. Uh, if we get in an ECG, if we get incomplete RBV, incomplete RBV, whenever we get incomplete RBV in an ECG, always look for the axis. If we get left axis deviation, it is suggestive of osteum primum. And if we get right axis deviation or axis is normal, then it is suggestive of osteum secundum. But always ruled out by doing the 2D echo. Similarly, in ventricular septal defect, we have a biventricular hypertrophy. Uh, we have, it's also called Tad's vector phenomena. In ECG, we find deep QRS or a biphasic QRS in precordial leaves. If we see this ECG, we will see this RSR pattern in V1 and the slurred S V in lead 1 and V6. So it is RBV. Here also we can see this RSR pattern in uh, lead V1, V2 also and deep S V, stirred S V, uh, sorry, lead V6. So it is also suggestive of RBV. Here, in case of left bundle branch block, the left bundle is not able to activate septum from left to right. So, so the first activation happens from uh, right to left in this direction. So, we will get a positive deflection in V6 and negative deflection in V1. As left ventricle has uh, more mass, the deflection will be more as compared to the V1 and uh, uh, also the impulses from the right ventricle they will go to left ventricle but this conduction speed is slow as they are traveling from the uh, within the myocytes. We will get a prolonged monophasic R wave in lead 1 and V6 and similarly uh, its corresponding negative deflection uh, we call it as QS complex in V1. So, uh, in uh, left bundle branch block, we get monophasic, monophasic QRS complexes in left side leads that is lead 1 and V6 
these are the monophasic uh, these are the monophasic us complexes sorry monophasic r waves in lead 1 and lead b6 and this is the qs complex we will get in lead b1 the qs complex will uh, this will be more than three small boxes or we can say uh, this qs complex will be more than uh, 120 milliseconds so in left bundle branch block we will get monophasic r waves in lead b, lead 1 and b6 and deep qs complex deep and wider qs complex in lead v1 the left bundle branch block is always associated with structural heart disease or it can be a precursor to advanced coronary artery disease so whenever we find left bundle branch block in an ecg we should always think of structural heart disease or it may be a prerequisite for advanced coronary artery disease and in more than 99% cases, the LVV is always pathological. So we have to be very careful. We have a, a mnemonic to remember the right bundle branch block and left bundle branch block as marrow and abelian. Marrow means M pattern in lead one, uh, lead B1 and W pattern in lead B6. And this is the right one to branch block. Similarly, we have W pattern in lead V1 and M pattern in lead V6 in case of left one to branch block. Here we can see this monophasic R waves uh, in uh, lead 1 and QS complexes in lead V1. Similarly, monophasic S wave, sorry, monophasic uh, R waves we can also see in B6 also. Uh, rather, I shall say monophasic QRS complexes in lead 1 and B6 and QS complexes in lead B1. This was about the left bundle branch block. It is almost always pathological or it is a suggestive of uh, structural heart disease or it is a precursor for a coronary artery disease. In bundle branch blocks, we, are, we should always uh, see the T-wave discord, discordance. This uh, T-wave discordance is the rule of appropriate uh, discordant. It means the T wave direction will be exactly opposite to the direction of the preceding wave in the complex. Uh, let us see uh, if we see this RSR complex here, the T wave is going in this direction when the preceding wave is in this direction. They should be inversely proportional to each other, means opposite to each other. If uh, we get uh, this type of pattern that uh, T wave is in, uh, in negative and the, here the R wave is positive. Here also the R wave is positive and this uh, T wave is negative. Means they are up inversely proportional to each other. This is called T wave discordance or we call it as a rule of appropriate discordance. Whenever we get T wave, we have to see the direction of the T wave if it, it should be exactly opposite to the direction of the preceding wave in the complex and this is normal we call them as a discordant t wave discord if we have rbb with discordant t waves that is the direction of the t wave is opposite to the direction of the preceding r wave or any preceding wave we call it as uh, discordant t wave similarly here in b6 this is the direction of S wave and it is the direction of T wave means T wave is direction of the T wave is opposite to the preceding S wave. So this is discordant T waves. Any RVB with discordant T wave we call it as a uh, normal or uncomplicated right bundle branch block. And but if 
this discordance is lost that is the direction of the p wave and direction of the preceding wave is also in the same direction then it's it is suggestive of myocardial ischemia here we can see t wave and preceding r wave in the same direction here the t wave and uh, preceding s wave are in the similar direction and if we find uh, any right bundle block, block uh, with this uh, uh, concordant t wave we we should always think of ischemia here also in left bundle branch block uh, in the direction of the t wave and the direction of the this qs complex is in the opposite they are inversely proportional means they are in opposite direction we call it as uncomplicated left bundle branch block similarly if left bundle branch if they are the we have concordant t wave means the direction of the t wave and the preceding uh, qs complex is in the same direction then we call it them as a concordant t wave and it is suggestive of myocardial abnormality though the left bundle branch block are usually abnormal finding in the ecg uh, let's discuss about the deeply about the fascicular blocks we have two types of blocks left anterior fascicular block and left posterior fascicular block the anterior fascicle are usually sub pericardial in region they are in the sub pericardial region they are relatively long and thin they have single blood supply and they are more common than the posterior fascicle block because because of single blood supply if we see this left bundle branch this is the anterior fascicle and this is the left posterior fascicle if left left anterior fascicle is blocked suppose this is blocked here then the uh, current will not flow like this the direction of the current will be in this direction similarly as we know if this is the heart we know the placements of the leads and uh, this is the position of the avl this is the position of the lead 1 this is the position of lead 2 this is the position of lead 3 this is the position of lead avf and this is the position of avr so uh, in left anterior fascicular block since the direction of the vector is in this direction we get we will get maximum positive deflection in lead avl and lead 1 means we will get tall r wave in lead avl and lead 1 and similarly we will get opposite uh, negative deflection in lead 3 and lead 2 or avf okay i hope this is clear similarly uh, if we see if left posterior fascicle is blocked means the direction of current will be in this direction and it will come like this because this is blocked the current will flow like this so if we see the position of the uh, lead this is lead avl this is lead 1 this is lead 2 this is avf this is lead 3 this is lead avr so we will get maximum positive deflection in lead 3 and maximum negative deflection in lead lead avr sorry lead avr so Uh, depending upon uh, this concept we will uh, try to uh, locate the findings in the left anterior fascicular block and the left posterior fascicular block let us see in an ecg whenever we find an right bundle branch block we have to look for axis deviation if we get left axis deviation we should always look for left anterior fascicular block the left anterior fascicular block uh, we will find uh, in this way to detect a left anterior fascicular block suppose this is the block the direction of the vector will be like this because of left posterior fascicular are working so we will get maximum positive deflection 
इन लीड ए बी एल लीड वन दिस इज लीड टू लीड ए बी एल एंड दिस इज लीड थ्री एंड दिस इज ए बी एल सो सिंस द डायरेक्शन ऑफ द वेक्टर इज लाइक दिस वी विल गेट मैक्सिमम पॉजिटिव डिफ्लेक्शन दैट इज मैक्सिमम आर वे इन लीड ए बी एल देन लीड वन एंड सिमिलरली हेयर वी विल गेट मैक्सिमम नेगेटिव डिफ्लेक्शन इन लीड थ्री means q wave sorry s wave in lead 3 will be more than lead 2 or abl i once again repeat whenever we get rbb we see it's it has left axis deviation then we have to look for left anterior fascicular block this left anterior fascicular block we will get maximum positive deflection that is maximum r wave in lead avl speed avl will show maximum r wave as compared to lead 1 okay similarly lead 3 will show maximum negative deflection then avf or lead 2 deep s wave if we get this type of pattern we call it as a right wonder bank block with left axis deviation with left anterior fascicular block similarly if we get a right wonder bank block and we get right axis deviation we should think of left posterior fascicular block in left posterior fascicular block what we see this suppose this is the anterior fascicle this is the posterior fascicle suppose this is block this is left posterior fascicle left anterior fascicle suppose this is block so the direction of the vector or the direction of current will be like in this direction so and if we see the orientation of the lead this is lead avl this is lead 1 this is lead 2 this is lead abf this is lead 3 and this is avr so we will get maximum uh, positive deflection in lead 3 as compared to lead abf or lead 2 and maximum negative deflection in lead abl so in a patient of rbb right axis deviation if the ecg findings are showing maximum r wave in lead 3 and deep s wave in lead abl we should think of left posterior fascicular block so uh, we will get maximum r wave in lead abl sorry lead 3 then lead abf or lead 2 and similarly maximum negative deflection that is s wave in lead abl as compared to lead 1 okay i hope the fascicular blocks are uh, clear now suppose if we get right wonder bank block and any of the left anterior fascicular block or left posterior fascicular block we call it as bifascicular block by fascicular block rbb plus left anterior fascicular block or the left posterior fascicular block we call it as by fascicular block similarly if we get uh, right bundle branch block plus left anterior fascicular block plus prolonged pr interval prolonged pr interval means ab nodal dysfunction rbb plus left anterior fascicular block plus prolonged pr interval we call it as a tri fascicular tri fascicular block it is an emergency and such patient should be taken for permanent pacemaker okay the pr interval we can easily see in d2 and v1 because pv were very much visible in d2 uh, and v1 so 
so right bundle branch block left anterior fascicular block and prolonged pr interval is suggestive of tri fascicular block and it is an indication for permanent pacemaker implantation this diagram you can uh, remember to look for uh, changes in ecg for left anterior fascicular block as i said uh, patient of right bundle branch block with left axis deviation they will have left axis uh, this left anterior fascicular block they have prolonged uh, long tall or weak in lead avl and uh, similarly deep s wave in lead uh, 3 avf or lead 2 or similarly for left posterior fascicle uh, block we will have uh, right bundle branch block with right axis deviation and uh, we will get uh, tall or we in lead avf or we can say lead 3 okay you, in this figure you can remember i hope bundle branch blocks are cleared and they are very important uh, in the diagnosis of uh, ecg abnormalities if you have any query you should can drop me them drop me the message please read standard textbooks like shamroth ecg for your further uh, clarification regarding the ecg changes or ecg findings